Alleluia! Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and so worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. A response to the lesson today comes from Psalm 31. We will use verses 1 through 5 and then 15 and 16. Psalm 31 begins on page 622 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will recite it together. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. The second lesson is a reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Listen now, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to be with myself, so that where I am, there also you may be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Now Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works even than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, then I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. On this fifth Sunday in Easter, we continue our, to make our way through Eastertide. We are now five weeks into celebrating the resurrection of the Lord, and we begin to turn our vision slightly away from that wonderful event of the resurrection and begin to anticipate that great feast of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit in power, upon those first disciples. We do this because, in fact, we should be praying now that the Holy Spirit would come upon us in much the same way, in the same great power that he did so many centuries ago. It is the testimony of the church that the Holy Spirit lives deep within us. This is why the church has endured all these many, many, many years. 
and that the works the church does and does in the name of Christ are in fact the works of God. That's what this lesson really tries to teach us. That in fact, we as disciples of Christ, if we believe in the name of the Lord Jesus, if we truly believe that he lives among us, if we truly pray and receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that we are actually part of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And as such, we begin to share the life of God. Now, some ask the question about this particular lesson, whether or not Jesus is saying, you must believe in my name or you will not go to heaven. Well, that is in a sense true, but it is not the way that most people think of it. Somehow we come to this conclusion that God is looking at our passport to see if we are stamped with the name of the Lord Jesus before we are admitted to the heavenly places. And I don't think that's quite the way God works. Rather, Jesus is trying to teach us something. Trying to teach us really that we already dwell in the house of God. We already dwell in that mansion that he went to prepare for us. That this is not some future event, but rather that we are in the process of journeying toward that wonderful place. We are in the process of journeying into the very mind and the heart of God, of God, the maker of heaven and earth. And as we profess, all things visible and invisible. And it is that life that we share in God. I think that's why this particular lesson begins with those wonderful words, do not let your hearts be troubled. In these days, particularly, many of us have very deeply troubled hearts. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much danger seeming to lurk around. We don't know whether or not we will even survive this particular pandemic, much less the difficulties that are ahead as we seek to rebuild our society and our economy. Much will be demanded of us. This is true. But the reality is that we have been given much already. For what we celebrate now is that we possess the very spirit of the living God. And that if that spirit dwells within us, there is nothing, not even death itself, that can overcome us. That's the message of this Eastertide. And we need to think on that over and over again so that as we open up the scriptures on the day of Pentecost, we begin to realize that we are not simply telling a story about something that happened a long time ago, but we are looking at our very selves and we are seeing the Spirit of God come in power among us. Even as our society around us, our friends, our family, our neighborhoods, even our nation struggles, even in the world, perhaps this is a time to realize that it is now that we must turn to God. Not in some sort of supplication as bad people demanding mercy from God, but realizing that God already loves us and that he is always inviting us in. God never turns away from us. It is we who simply need to open our eyes and see the work of God all around. We will do works greater even than these, Jesus teaches us. So the mighty acts of healing that we see in the Gospels, the acts of transformation and giving life that we see in the gospel text, these great works that Jesus did, we do too. We may do them in small ways, but we do them nonetheless. And as we do these things, we are making our way, our journey, to that mansion that Jesus has prepared for us, the mansion which is nothing more, nothing less, rather, than eternal life, eternal life with the Father, 
eternal life that we will share forever. Do not let your hearts be troubled. How can we have such deep anxiety if we know that it is the Lord who stands with us? If we know that even when we face persecution because of our faith, as did Stephen, we can still forgive. We can still live because of the power of love. It is in that loving kindness, that mercy that God shares with us always, that we find rest and calm and peace for these troubled hearts of ours. As this week goes on, and we hear more and more news of the tragedy of death, of the infection with illness, we need to realize that this is no punishment from God, but rather a challenge for us to rise to the occasion and to begin to take care of one another in such a way that love knows no bounds and that people will be able to see the very life of God alive in us. When we were baptized, we professed our faith, even with words not spoken by our own hearts, but spoken for us. So it is now that we turn to the Lord and again profess our own faith by saying the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so now, as the people of God, we unite our hearts in prayer by saying, God of resurrection, Hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, especially the Anglican Church of Kenya and their bishop, Jackson Olesapit, and for St. George's Hellertown, St. Stephen's Whitehall, the Diocese of Kajokeji and their bishop, Emmanuel Murray, and St. Peter Logu and Kanyani parishes, that all who profess to honor the risen Lord may be faithful in their witness and courageous in their testimony to the way of Jesus. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For pastors, teachers, and ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, myself and Mary, who are priests at St. Luke's, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may seek to build the church upon Christ, the cornerstone, and humbly lead in faithful service. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and its leaders, especially Donald, our president, and Tom, our governor, and all those that serve as their advisors in these troubled days, that all may dwell in peace, that goodwill might prevail over division, and people of faith may freely worship as their hearts direct. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For rain and sun in proper measure, and for abundant food and water for all who dwell upon the earth, 
God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick, those that suffer from the coronavirus infection, and all those who are in need, we remember especially Marion, Fred, Stephen, Harry, Joan, Tom, June, Barbara, Zena, Catherine, Rosemary, Clinton, and Bud and for any others who are oppressed by wounds of the soul. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that our present distance may teach the value of kindness and neighborliness, so that we may live together in unity, though apart. We pray for strangers among us, that they may find in us hospitable friends. God of resurrection, Hear our prayer. And we pray for our enemies, that their sins may be forgiven them, and that they may find your peace and forgiveness. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son promised to grant whatever we ask in his name. By your Holy Spirit, empower us to minister and serve the world as his faithful disciples that our work may testify to what we pray and show forth your eternal glory. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so now, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. All things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to give, pray, to give praise to you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you and join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joys of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. And so now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God are given for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your minds and hearts ever in the knowledge and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may the full and abundant blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you now and remain among you always. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.